Some of my visions were explanations of things I didn't understand. Hello out there, how's everybody doing? Hope you're having a great day. Continuation of my visions here. My visions are in my dreams I envision several different wonderful explanations of subjects in the Bible that I, that I didn't understand or wanted more information about. And the Trinity is one of my profound visions. Now the Trinity is a subject that a lot of Christians, theologians, pastors, you know, know about. A lot of people know about it, but don't really want to talk about it. So why did I pick the Trinity? Well, let's, let's begin with some of the information that's available on the internet. The Trinity, the Triune, the Holy Trinity, you know, it has a few different names with it as well. I'm sticking with the Trinity, and I'm gonna ask you this one question. How many periodicals or published writings do you think there are out there on the Trinity? Get this, according to Google, 41,100,000. And I'm just one of 41 plus million that I know. <laughs> so, trying to bring my thoughts and writings about this subject to the Trinity, which is precarious to some and easy to, for others, and one video is still not gonna be very easy for me, you mean going on and on here. <laughs> so, it, it perhaps could be boring, or exciting, depending on how you perceive this subject. And I'll try to make it short and present it in hopefully two parts here. Please keep in mind that all of this is my interpretation and may parallel or be similar to other beliefs, but still will be my interpretation about all of this. The findings that I share are not that everyone should believe in as well, because God's view is the only one that matters. God is the only one that matters in this. And all of our different views could be linked together as a whole. We could all be correct in some way. In my opinion, we don't know all these answers until we get there. A great thing to ask, huh? This is exciting for me. Anytime we discuss the Bible, interpreting and trying to absorb the wonderful things that God wants to share with us, Hopefully some of you would like to share your thoughts you know, on this after hearing mine, after part two maybe. Trying to make it simple for all of us, adults included, one of the most referred to children's books is Three in One, a picture of God, and it uses an apple as a subject. The peel, the flesh, and core analogy, it's by Joanne Markenhouse. In the book, the apple represents the peel and the flesh, what you eat if you peel it first. And, you know, that's what the dictionary calls it, the flesh <laughs> and the core. Thus, three parts, one apple. Then using three persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as one God. Get that? Here's the Vineyard USA core value belief. This is their current statement on God, the King, and the Holy Trinity. We believe that God is the eternal king. He is an infinite, unchangeable spirit, perfect in holiness, wisdom, goodness, justice, power, and love. For from all eternity, he exists as the one living and true God in three persons of one substance, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in power and glory. Get that? The Tyndall Bible Dictionary states, the scriptures present the Father as a source, the source of creation, the giver of life, and God of all of the universe. The Son is depicted as the image of the invisible God, depicted as the image of the invisible God, the exact represent, representation of his being in nature, and the Messiah and Redeemer. The Spirit is God in action. I like this. God reaching people, influencing them, regenerating them, infilling them, and guiding them. Here's another one from Christianity.com. It's by uh, Dr. Ray Pitchard. All Christians believe the doctrine of the, tr the Trinity. I'm going to read that again. All Christians believe the doctrine of the Trinity. If you do not believe this, that is, if you have come to some settled conclusion that the doctrine of the Trinity is not true, you are not a Christian at all. 
You're not a Christian. Or in fact, you're a heretic. Being a heretic, I don't want to be a heretic. Having said that, Dr. Pritchard admits no one fully understands it. It's a mystery and a paradox. He thinks of three reasons for believing in the Trinity exists. The Bible teaches this doctrine. Christians everywhere always believed it. And no other explanation makes sense. <laughs> Someone has said it this way. If you try to explain the Trinity, you will lose your mind. <laughs> and I probably lost mine. But if you deny it, you will lose your soul. Whew. Lose your soul. Man, wow. I'm going to lose my soul maybe. All of that. And now, where am I going with this? When I was in another church after my realignment, I was invited to perhaps help teach one of the chapters in the foundation classes. In doing so, I needed to sign an agreement. I had to agree with the church's statement of faith and sign a pledge that I would support the church's philosophy. I had to believe, number one, that whoever believes in Jesus Christ shall not perish but have everlasting life. I have no problem with that one. Then, if I believed in the Trinity, I'd sign a thing. If I believed in the Trinity, what? What? What is a trinity? At that time, I, over, I overwhelmingly did agree with the philosophy, but I did not understand the trinity portion. I was very young in the walk with Jesus, three or four year old, basically. I didn't even know what a trinity was. I mean, I, I've heard the word and stuff, but I didn't exactly apply it. So this started the next chapter of my walk with Jesus and my extensive research on what the Trinity is. And then finally, after a few months in one of my envisioned dreams, God explained it to me. He just explained it to me flat out. We'll tackle that in part two. <laughs> so thank you for watching. I hope you have the greatest day ever and we'll see you next time. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighted on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased.